Hey guys, today we're going to talk about Mazurka. We're going to talk about her base form, her brave shift form, her strengths and weaknesses, as well as her sample rotation and sample builds. I'm going to give my final thoughts at the end, so let's go. Here is Mazurka's SMR. It's called the Emotional Lance. It's a two-handed spear, 198 attack, accuracy plus 50, and 1 to 1.5 variance. The passive is aiming for the top, increased jump damage 100%. So her SEMR has the highest attack among all the two-handed spears in the game. Also has the highest jump damage passive. So overall, it's really good if two-handed spears ever become a thing for dragoons or chainers. Uh, sadly, the downside is it's a two-handed um, spear can't be equipped by um, through dual wield jump damage healers unless you want them to just um, single wield a uh, lance. But overall, it's a good um, two-handed spear, uh, 198 and highest jump damage in the game. This video is sponsored by Amazon Coins. Get 10,000 Amazon Coins for $80 instead of 100. That's a savings of 20%. You can use the Amazon Coins to buy Lapis for FFPE. I place a link in the description below. Check it out after you watch the video. If you enjoy content like this, consider subscribing. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Azure. I upload FFP and gaming content every day on this channel. If that's something you're interested in, then consider subscribing. You can also leave a like rating on the video as well and check me out at various social media. Links in the description. Next is Mazurka's TMR. It's called the Adept Double Edge Spear. So it's a materia with a passive of increased ice, water, earth, and light resistance 20% and increased physical and magic damage against plants. So it's a great TMR for plant killer, physical, and magical. Plant killer materia is really rare. So only two other plant killers are available. Or both physical and magic exist, um, namely Necropolis and Plant, plant Killer Plus. So if you do ever get Mazurka, um, make sure to get her TMR because it's um, valuable. Next is Mazurka's vision card. It's called Friends from Today. Base uh, base stats at level one is attack forty and level 10 stats base attack 100 so the passives are at level 4 three best friends one increase attack 50 percent when equipped with a spear and at level 7 increase attack again 50 percent when equipped with a spear and at level 10 getting even closer uh only for ffb units increase attack 30 percent unconditional so this is the best vision card for spear users and more if they are an n uh, FFB unit. This is going to be great on Dragoons such as Mazurka herself and King Edgar of Figaro NV. So I've been using some optimal vision cards on him since I don't have um, the wake up curl or battle with the Black Knight so I was using a uh, mad dash or facing the demon tower on him. But um, this uh, friends from today vision card would be great on him. So right, consider, consider um, pulling for Mazurka for this card. Okay, so we're gonna talk about her base form, uh, strengths for her base form. She can only equip spears, hats, clothes, and accessories. Uh, she does, however, have natural resistance to all elements, 40%. So Mazurka is a physical damage dealer that can apply a two stack mirage to the party using a skill. Her main skill has Stardust Ray Chains, while her grandest skill has a uh, AR Chains. Her AR skill has a uh, Fire Imperil and Fire Imbue attached to it. So her Stardust Ray uh, skill is Emotion Slash, Physical Damage 63 to all enemies, Evade 2 Physical Attacks for 4 turns to all allies. And then Blazing Lance is her grandest, 3 uses per battle, unique selection on multicast, fire physical damage 100% to all enemies, decrease fire resistance 120 for 5 turns to all enemies, also add fire element to physical attacks for 5 turns to cast her AR chain. Alright, so we're gonna talk about her LB. Her LB can also apply a Mirage, this time a 3 stack Mirage to the party. She has the tools to boost her LB damage. She has 100% LB damage passive and a 150 LB damage buff uh, that's an active one. 
So her LB is called the Lance Blast Max and one hit, so it's good for finishing. 46 LB uh, crits. So physical damage 80 to all enemies, evade 3 physical attacks for 4 turns, so all allies. And then her um, LB, LB um, active uh, buff is called L Step on the Ground. 4 turn cooldown available on turn 1, increase attack 300% for 5 turns to cast her. Also increase physical damage against plants 150 and also increase LB damage 150 for 2 turns. Can't be dispelled. And her passive for her LB damage is called Those Who Believed in Emptiness Mazurka. It's her passive. Increase LB damage 100 and also increase LB gauge fill rate 100%. So utility skills, she can nullify a spell using an ability, she does increase break damage for a spear. She can also provoke and buff elemental resistances to ice, water, earth, and light 80% to the party. So her break skill, skill is called the spirit of the double headed spear user. <laughs> Physical damage 1 with increased break damage 500% for a spear to one enemy. And her sealing ability is called Magic Seal, Double-Headed Gun. So nullify next spell, cast for one turn. And then her um, provoke skill is called Look Over Here. Three turn cooldown available on turn one, increased chance of being targeted 100% for two turns to cast her. And increase ice, water, earth, and light resistance 80% for two turns to all allies. Alright, so lastly, she can make an ally provoke, apply re-raise to said ally, and mitigate all damage taken from plants to that ally. All her abilities can be triple casted. So her triple cast is called T Emotional, and the the grant provoke to an ally is called Lance Baton. Three users per battle, unique selection and multicast. Increase chance of being targeted for one turn to one ally except caster, and then auto re revive. 80% HP for one turn to all ally except caster and also mitigate physical and magic damage taken against plants 40% for one turn to one ally except caster. So uh, passives, she already has cap TDH so we can concentrate on building her for jump damage and attack. She does 150% more damage to plants so including um, her active plant killer buff that's 300 um, killers to plants. She can counter physical and magic attacks with a 5 LB um, crisp fill to the party, although that's just 30% to counter. She has 100% increase in chain modifier cap, so one Saber Souls Lightning SU mark can give her another 100% to reach the cap. So going down the list, she already has 190 attack and some MP defense and HP um, boosts. And like I mentioned earlier, her equipment attack is already at 400. It's capped, so no need to equip her with any TDH equipment. Uh, increase uh, LB damage 100%, and also increase LB gauge fill rate 100%, and MP refresh 7% per turn. Alright, so here is a sample build for her base form. Actually, um, Mazurka doesn't do much damage in base form. Um, LB is kind of, LB modifier is kind of low, uh, as well as her abilities. So in fact, her base form serves to support her brave shift form. So we'll just build her base form for LB fill or auto LB, so she can fire off her brave shift LB faster. So we're gonna equip her with a since she can only equip. Um, Spears, so we'll equip her with a Bistro Fort from Kina, Magical Top Hat for the Auto LB, Luminous Clothes from Lumina, we get her as a free unit in the event, so make sure to farm her um, loads. I think it gives um, 8 LB per turn, and then Rose's Earrings, Dragon's Brush also gives um, Auto LB, Moodmaker for the um, uh, LB Fail buff, and then Adept Double Edge Spear, that's her team R. And Call of the Wild Auto LB again, and here's Vow Earth for LB fill rate. And we're gonna equip her Vision Card friends from today, since um, her base form and Brave Shift form share Vision Cards. 
Okay, so what are the weaknesses? There are lots of weaknesses with her base form. So let's start with her equipment pool. It's very limited. So uh, <laughs> clothes, hats, and spears. So that's all she can equip. So uh, she has a tools to excel as an LB damage healer. So remember 100% LB buff and 150 active. Uh, but her LB modifiers are quite low. So modifier for L her LB is 80. Uh, the LB cost is high. There's no way to fill her LB gauge using a scale. All right, so if you're gonna use her for the three stack Mirage, um, build her for auto LB and LB fill rate. Uh, her external provoke scale can only be used three times per battle. So you can't be relied on to make another unit provoke for the entire fight. Her provoke skill to herself though isn't on um, uh, isn't a grand disability, so you can just still use that on herself. She cannot maximize the use of her spear break skill since she will be built TDH instead of true dual wield. So usually you want to maximize the damage of the break skill by uh, dual wielding, but since she will be built uh, more likely TDH, she will only hit once instead of uh, twice. Alright, and then lastly, her fire and brew and bu has limited use, making it unreliable du during long battles. But it does have a long duration, though. Okay, so we're gonna move on to her brave shift form. It's available from turn one. Duration is infinite. Cooldown to normal is one turn. Cooldown to brave shift is two turn. So she gains um, uh, more. Uh, armor types for her brave shift so she can equip helms light armor and heavy armor but she can still only equip spears so she only has two active skills in brave shift form um she loses her partial resistance to all elements so no more 40 percent across the board her blooming jump um, includes a, a, an attack self buff at least so you won't have to spend a turn buffing so Blooming Jump is a self-contained skill, all uh, cures attack break caster, increase attack 300% for 3 turns to caster, just, just enough for her um, to land and still have the buff. Um, physical damage 80% with time, jump delay 2 turns to one enemy. So you jump turn 1, you land turn 3. Then Confusion Jump, infl inflict Confuse 100% to one enemy, physical damage 65 with time, jump delay one turn to one enemy so jump turn one land turn two her lb does fire physical damage and it has 30 hits i'm not sure if it changed with chains with anything though um, but i'll update uh it i'll put something in the comments if i figure out what uh it changed with it chains with the lb also boosts the modifier for blooming jump so if you use the lb before blooming jump it does more damage uh all right and she still has access to her 100 lb passive but no active lb damage buff but no worries you can just um, use her active lb damage buff in base form and immediately immediately shift to uh, brave shift form all right her um, LB is called the Flame Flower Dra Dive, max 30 hits and 46 LB, similar to her base form. Fire, it does fire physical damage 100% to one enemy, so slightly higher modifiers there. Increase modifier 20 for 4 turns to cancer, can't be dispelled. Bloom Jump, Bloom Jump 1, up to Bloom Jump 4. So just enough for one, uh, one jump and one land, and you have to... Um, fire off her LB again to get the modifier boost. And then her um, LB passive is still those who believe in emptiness, Mazurka, I'll increase LB damage 100%. Alright, so passives. She has similar passives to her base form except for the jump damage boosts. So we only need to build her for jump damage, chain modifier cap, and attack shin since she already is capped on TDH. So similar to her base form, she has 190% attack, 400 TDH, and she also still does um, 150 physical damage against plants. She has um, 400 jump damage uh, passive. The 100% though is tied to her trust or SUMR. So either equip her SUMR or her TMR. 
and um, still has a chain modifier cap, cap 100%. So one SOS Lightning SUMR will cap that at 200. And then uh, she also has auto LB eight per turn. Uh, that That is her trust passive as well. And LB gauge fill rate 100%. Okay, so what are her Brave Shift weaknesses? The most obvious weak weakness in her Brave Shift form is that she is a two-handed jump damage healer. So she only hits once compared to true dual wield jump damage healers who hit twice. Um, the latter can also equip two spears to further increase their jump damage. Mazur can, can only hold one unless she's enabled via dual wield. Although her spear does give 100% jump damage, so thankfully, she already has a maxed out true double hand and a lot of jump damage passives. So that's 500% jump damage, including her SUMR. So building her won't be so hard. She also doesn't have a way to fill her LB gauge in BS form, hence why we built her base form for LB fill and auto LB. Alright, so here's a sample build. I'll give two sample builds, one TDH, one true dual wield. So we'll build her for jump damage, attack and chain cap mod since she already has cap TDH. So we're, we're gonna equip her SEMR Emotional Lands and Choco Pro's hat plus plus. That, that's the first hat that gives 50% um, jump damage. So we can farm that in her event. Don't forget to make that one. Glacial Battle Garb, um, just attack um, clothes. And then Dragoon's Gauntlet for jump damage, Warrior Light Guards for the flat attack, Indestructible Light for the chain cap mod increase, that's from, from Lightning. And then Memories of Ragnarok, two of those, so that's from um, Graceful uh, Warrior Fang, so that's from Fang, that's her SUMR. And uh, Empty Slot for Killer, and then a Vision Guard Friends from today. Alright, so uh, speaking of true dual wield, we can force her to become true dual wield, uh, but it will be uh, it will come at a sacrifice of killers and chain cap mod. So won't have a slot for a killer and won't have a slot for the the one hundred percent chain cap modifier. So we we're gonna equip the spirit lands um, from Kimari, Kane's lands from Kane, Choco Pro hat again and same accessories and clothes and memory of ragnarok again and we're gonna equip her tmr since we don't have her SEMR equipped and then uh dual wield to enable dual wield and guardian of light riku for true dual wield and some attack still the same vision card Okay, so here's a sample rotation. I've made two, one for max burst and one for average damage. So we need to fire off her LB in order to boost her jump modifier, remember? So we'll st start off in base form to fill um, her LB and then imbue fire and apply a killer buff or plants. And then skip turn one if you have external LB fill support. So if you don't have any external LB fill unit to fill her LB gauge, um, we're going to spend turn one uh, chaining emotion slash uh, three times so we can get um, some auto LB and some LB crisps. And then turn to emotion slash again for some more LB crisps. I'll step on the ground and then blazing lance for the fire imbue. And then turn three we shift, then we LB so we can get the uh, damage modifier um, her LB does um, 350 and then turn four four we jump blooming jump and then turn five we stay in the air and turn six we land uh, that 600 modifier we can increase that more with more jump damage um, equipment Alright, so she can also do short jumps with Confusion Jump. So instead of waiting two turns, you can just wait one turn and then you can do damage. Alright, so um, turn one, uh, bait. you don't have to fill your LB gauge since uh, the LB gauge only, uh, the LB damage, the LB in her Brave Shift form only boosts the modifiers for Blooming Jump, not for Confusion Jump. 
So we're just gonna um, imbue in the first turn, um, uh, buff, buff, and then lance baton. Uh, lance baton is optional, and then. Turn two, we shift, and then we confusion jump, and then turn three, we land for 500% jump damage. That's 390. Also, can be increased if you equip more jump damage, and then repeat for four and five, and then turn six, just uh, go back to base form, and then buff there and shift again on turn seven. All right. So, what are the best um, units to pair with? Uh, to bring with Mazurka. So since Mazurka is a jump finisher, she'll need a chain to cap. So the recently released tag units make great companions for her, especially um, Rain and Fina. They have a fire tag attack LB in their base form. And then last one on Reagan uh, also has fire tag abilities. So they can also imbue themselves with fire and they have a tag attack LB in their base form and their bracer form has fire tag abilities. So um, they're perfect with Mazurka or fire damage chaining. So as for support units, I mentioned that you could um, accelerate her, her um, damage if you have um, LB fill external support. So that will be Realm. She can fill Mazurka's LB gauge and also boost her fire damage as well. I think 10%. Alright, so Mazurka also pairs well with King Edgar of Figaro and V since he can imperil the enemy to spears by 25 using her LB, his LB. However, it would be hard to gear, gear both of them since they require similar equipment. But if uh, Mazurka is true um, is TDH, um, they won't share as much equipment. Alright, so that could be something to think about. Alright, what are my final thoughts about Mazurka? Mazurka in her base form is strong against plant enemies, so that's 150 passive and 150 active plant killer. She can apply 2 to 3 stacks of Mirage to the party, which can be useful in certain situations, especially if you're mis missing the uh, event only um, unit Kimari that uh, can apply 2 stacks of Mirage, and also uh, Renora. She can also seal magic and it's part of her triple cast so you can still do something else while sealing the, sealing the enemy's magic. Um, she has 40% natural resistance to all enemies and she can function as a provoker. Uh, she also has the ability to make a unit provoke for one turn and apply a regrace to said unit. Um, there are a lot of niche things she can do but the most useful will be the 2-3 to three stack. Mirage. So in summary, she's a great defensive unit in base form. Her shift form can certainly do some damage, but not as much as true dual wield jump damage healers. She's easy to gear though, uh, she, since she already has 400% TDH. One can gear here, her pretty easily since her SMR already has jump damage. So if you do get her, you can just use, um, you can awaken her to EX2 or just use an SMR Moogle, you already have a decent weapon for her, uh, a great weapon for her. Um, we can farm a hat with 50% jump damage um, during her event and then we can exchange some coins for jump damage material during her banner and event. So if you read the news, um, uh, you can exchange summon coins for certain jump damage material in the exchange shop. Alright, so materials with plant killers are quite rare, so her TMR is valuable. So if ever you come across Mazurka, don't forget to get her SMR, uh, her TMR. Her SMR has the highest stats and passive among all the two-handed spears. Um, the only downside it, is that it's two-handed. And then her vision card goes well with King Edgar of Figaro and other jump damage dealers. So overall, I have mixed reactions to Mazurka. On one hand, she is fairly easy to gear and use. Fairly simple kit. On the other hand, I think she's too simple. Her BS kit is bare bones, so two, only two abilities and one LB. And her equipment pool is so small. She fe feels kind of boxed in as a unit. Um, but that's just me. I like complicated units that I, I can figure out how to use. But um, I would be happy to pull her someday off banner because I like her vision card. Um, but I wouldn't pull for her solely for her vision card. 
All right, guys, I hope this review has been helpful. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know if you're going to pull for her for a revision card or for the unit itself or if you find her, um, uh, her design nice. I think her Brave Shift sprite is really cool. Um, I like the Dragoon look. And then um, thanks for the support. Uh, make sure to like the video. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and then click on the notification bell to get notified when I upload new videos to your channel. As usual guys, thanks for the support and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.